Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Henderson. I'm an investment analyst here at True Potential. Trade tensions between the US and China have been dominating the global trading landscape since the start of tariffs by the US on China in March 2018. The trading relationship escalated this week, ultimately resulting in the US labelling China as a currency manipulator. Almost immediately afterwards, the US announced tariffs on additional Chinese goods and the Chinese currency, the renminbi, surpassed a psychologically important level of seven for every one US dollar. The exchange rate system in China is managed differently from most developed economies. They have a system whereby their currency is pegged and expected to move gradually within a narrow band against the US dollar. This means the monetary authorities are very keen to take an active role to maintain a relatively stable exchange rate. This peg approach has been a key element helping China's economy rise rapidly and has arguably allowed the value of the renminbi to artificially weaken. A weak currency allows goods to be more competitive on the global stage, leading to higher exports and has allowed China's manufacturing sector be to become one of the largest in the world. China's currency is generally considered to be undervalued by investors. The fact that the currency is now depreciating isn't something new, and neither is the accusation that China is a currency manipulator. Previous US administrations have talked about the practice of currency depreciation, saying depreciation occurs at the expense of US-based manufacturers. Concrete steps to designate China as a currency manipulator is not without consequence. China must engage with the IMF and the US to assess steps which can be taken to value the renminbi more fairly. Whether this endeavour is fruitful is actually doubtful, as China can point to legitimate economic reasons for the fall in the currency's value. The longer term effects of further weakening represents a challenge to the, to the US because many of the policy mechanisms at Trump's disposal have already been enacted. It also poses a broader threat if regional competitors take indirect action to lower the value of their currencies. A round of competitive devaluations isn't helpful for global trade flows. It remains unclear whether the present dispute will escalate to the point described above. Economic and political self-interest may dictate a resolution of some of the present problems. US presidential elections scheduled for November of 2020 make it unlikely the current administration will wish to intensify tensions much further given the negative ramifications it's likely to have on the broader US economy. Also, we should not forget that China is intent on rebalancing its economy, seeking less reliance upon cheap manufacturing in favour of faster growth in services and domestic consumption. While the dispute continues, both economies are moving forward. The US's dominant services sector remains in expansive territory, with PMI data outstripping analysts' expectations. Likewise in China, export data remains positive and a continued and upward trend in July, meaning the value of Chinese exports actually grew by 64% since January 2018. The actions taken by the US and Chinese authorities are reflective of simmering global tensions between the two world's largest economies, not just related to trade, but also technological leadership with China showing signs of moving ahead of the US in some key areas. It remains to be seen whether the latest escalation will create a permanent era of trade restrictions between the US and China, or merely represent a negotiation ploy to enact pressure on each country's respective leadership. However, the fundamental economic data from both economies indicates the simmering tensions has yet to boil over and affect the underlying health of either economy. Thank you very much for watching.